Welcome back to At Home with the Dogginses. Hello, everyone. And it is time for a quarantine Q&A. Hooray! We've been collecting questions uh, from you all over the past couple of weeks or so. And uh, no surprise, there are a lot of them about theme parks. <laughs> there are indeed a lot about theme parks. There are a couple that are not about theme parks, but... Uh, Let's get to the small handful of questions we've gotten. Uh, should we get the theme park ones out of the way first? Let's just do it. Let's just and, do it. And uh, then move on to other ones. Okay. Uh, Ray Clawson Jr. asked, if we could move a non-Disney ride to Disneyland, what would it be? It's not technically a ride, but Mystery Lodge would fit into Epcot. Would be a better fit for the American Adventure at Epcot. I I agree. That's actually really good. I was I was like thinking, God, what ride would be good? But no, that's that's actually perfect. Um, but that's not Disneyland, of course. Uh, Disneyland could you? Well, actually, Mystery Lodge could fit into Frontierland. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and really, any of the Ghost Town rides would be nice additions mm-hmm. to Frontierland. There was a park in Maryland called Storybook Village, which did a lot of fairy tale related, uh, which was a fairy tale related theme park. Mm-hmm. And they had a really cool uh, Three Little Pigs uh, set up that you could walk through. And I think that could work really well in Fantasyland. Like, there were several little, like, uh, picturesque sequences that you could walk through in the park that probably I think could do really well in Fantasyland. So it was sort of like if the Storybook Land boat was more of a walkthrough. That, than, uh... Yeah, that's because I am too big of a person to be on the Storybook Land bro- bo- boat now. <laughs> so, But I really like the Storybook Land boat. So this would be kind of like the melding of the two. Being able to like walk through these things and kind of have like a nice little experience. Also, uh... Twisted Colossus is like the only roller coaster I really like at Magic Mountain. So I'm not saying it would fit into Disneyland. I'm just saying I would rather it was in a better park than Magic Mountain. When they inevitably buy the Anaheim Field uh, where the baseball happens and then uh, turn that into the third gate. (laughs) There we go. Just find somewhere to put Twisted Colossus. Just yank it up from Six Flags. When Disney buys Anaheim completely (laughs) outright. On YouTube, Red Cup Productions asked, Many Disney rides use IP to retell the stories the rides are based on. Peter Pan, Pinocchio, Little Mermaid, etc. But what attractions based on IPs do you think do not retell the story as well as they could? What could be improved? Um, so Chris Nebergall, of course, had the video about how most of the Fantasyland rides weren't really interested in retelling the whole story. They were mm-hmm. just interested in uh, recapturing a specific experience from their story. Um, so... Most of the Fantasyland rides aren't really complete encapsulations of the story. And judging them on that front, I don't think any of them really have massive shortcomings. I will say the Little Mermaid ride does really rush the ending. Big time, yeah. But not more than the Little Mermaid stage show at Hollywood Studios did. Yeah. I actually think in the opposite direction. I think it's unfortunate that the Monsters, Inc. ride is just trying to tell the whole story instead of just being a thrill ride in the door factory. I think you were correct about that. That would be so much more fun than what we got there. And I get that that ride was just a cheap replacement for Superstar Limo, and it is a good overall that Superstar Limo is not in the park anymore. Yeah. But uh, it is... Yeah, it, it does not live... Up. Actually... Incredibles needs a better ride too than like Incredibles isn't trying to redo either of the stories. It's just trying mm-hmm. to be another incredible story. It's just not a particularly interesting Incredicoaster is not a particularly interesting incredible story. Incredicoaster was a lateral move from California Screaming overall. Mm-hmm. Also, like this isn't just limited to Disney, but any ride that just slaps an IP on an existing ride system in general, you know, any Six Flags superhero ride, mm-hmm. any uh the only places where that's really a thing in Disneyland are like, you know, Dumbo's not really the Dumbo story. It's just, hey, mm-hmm. you're on a flying elephant and like the inside out emotional whirlwind, that sort of thing. They're not trying to tell the story, but they also don't do justice to their stories, even if they were trying to mm-hmm. tell the story. Jacob Martin asks, what Disney World attraction do you wish would come to Disneyland most? Uh, Test track. Test track. I miss test track. Yeah, uh, we kind of get that. We, we get a version of that with Radiator Springs Racers, but it's not exactly the same thing. Yeah. Um, as much as I love Mission Breakout, I would say if we got like the real Tower of Terror, not the watered down Pressler version that DCA got, 
like the full on mm-hmm. fifth dimension Tower of Terror. Oh yeah, that would be a really nice one. Yeah. That that would be nice to have nearby. Um, it would be nice to have that in addition to uh, uh, Mission Breakout. Mm-hmm. Um, also, like, so great movie ride doesn't exist anymore, but I do miss it. And we are eventually getting Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, so that doesn't count. <laughs> um, and of course, I miss Muppet Vision terribly, but that goes without saying. We deserve Muppet Vision back on this coast. Yeah, most of the really great Disney World rides already have equivalents or have upcoming equivalents in Disneyland already. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know. At least out of the ones I've been on, I haven't been on Seven Doors Mine Train yet. Mm-hmm. Um, or any of the Pandora stuff. Uh, Chandler asks, what's your favorite Florida attraction that has since closed permanently? I'm going to say either Great Movie Ride or Disaster at Universal Mm -hmm. Studios. I miss Disaster, and I'm told that uh, their version of Supercharged is no better than ours, so it's frustrating that it was taken away for that. I, I got to agree with Great Movie Ride. I remember doing that when uh, in, on my infamous Florida trip with my uh, graduating class. And mm. that was sort of like a nice cap to that wild weekend. Your Florida trip discussed in a previous episode. Yes. Uh, Landon asks, what attraction that you haven't experienced would you be most excited to experience in Central Florida? Uh, I'm looking forward to checking out basically everything that's open since I've last been there. I'm looking forward to Seven Dwarfs Mine Train. I'm looking forward to Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. I'm looking forward to the Pandora rides. I'm looking forward to Escape from Gringotts. Uh, Basically, everything that's open since I've left, I'm excited about, except for Supercharged and Jimmy Fallon. Those I'm just like curious about but not excited about yeah i'm i'm curious about jimmy fallon only because i have a friend that works on that ride so it'd be mm-hmm. interested to see what she's been talking about for the past like three yeah. years but uh yeah i i think honestly uh runaway rail has been become like my new favorite thing i want to go check out in florida whenever we go yes august asks what attraction do you wish was still around at universal studios hollywood uh easy for me terminator 2 3d i miss that so much and, of course, I miss Back to the Future, but mm-hmm. I'm happier with the thing that replaced that than I am with the thing that replaced Terminator. Yeah. Uh, he also asked, what was the best meet-and-greet experience? I've never been a big meet-and-greet guy. Um, keeping it in the universal realm, uh, I do think that uh, the Transformers meet-and-greets and the uh, Raptor encounter T- technically counts as a meet and greet like mm-hmm. all the lower lot meet and greets at universal are very impressive my favorite meet and greet is when we met weird al sure <laughs> um oh actually uh my favorite meet and greet in a park that we did was uh during halloween when they had uh I forget the character's name, but uh, the tightrope girl from the stretching portrait out. Oh my god, that was amazing! That was that, spectacular. That, Sally, right? Yeah, Sally something. Like it was some pun name. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was like that was so much fun to have her as a meet and greet character. That was very cool. Yeah. Uh, and really, just my favorite use of the theme park meet and greet ideal is Ghost Town Alive. Mm-hmm. Uh, finally, August asks, "What attraction should Disneyland remove?" I hesitate to say Disneyland should get rid of anything. Like, I'm always sort of of the mindset that, like, even if something's not for me, it's for somebody. And I don't want to take it away from the person who will miss it when it's gone. Unless it's to replace it with something better. So, I'm not really a big fan of removal for removal's sake. That said, I don't love the placement of Astro Orbiter at the entrance to Tomorrowland. I hate Astro Orbiter. Like, that's, that is my one, like, if I could remove any ride, I hate Astro Orbiter so much. And it's like, Star Jets was at least interesting because it was on top of the People Mover track. Mm-hmm. Astro Orbiter, like, we don't need another Dumbo-type aerial spinner in Disneyland. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I also would remove Buzz, like, yours, Astro Blasters. I hate that one, too. I don't hate Astro Blasters, but it is very underwhelming, and I wouldn't want to get rid of it unless I knew it was being replaced with something really good. 
Uh, Kate asks if we could bring one non-American ride, either Disney Universal or another park, to here, what would it be? I think we both have the same answer. Mystic Manor? Mystic Manor. Yeah. Definitely Mystic Manor. Uh, There are a couple others that would also be fun, but if I could only pick one, Mystic Manor is the one I want to see. Yeah. Uh, Kate also asks, which annual festivals or events in SoCal are our faves? Um, for theme park events, you know, we love Boysenberry Fest. We love food and wine mm-hmm. uh, at DCA. Uh, for non-theme park events, we had a lot of fun the one time we went to Claremont Pie Festival. Yeah. There's also um, Aria LA Voices, which is another food festival that happens in uh, downtown LA. Um, oh, it's yeah. with Grand Park, an uh, organization I occasionally work with. I've had some of the best tamales in the city there. And it's just sort of like a nice encapsulation of like different food from all over the Los Angeles and music there's so much bachata dancing it's just like a fun cool little experience that highly recommend if anyone's ever in la yeah um i'm trying to think of like annual events i used to do in places other than la and i none are really coming to mind yeah um the smithsonian folklife festival is another big one um great food every year for that um and uh, you get like you you focus on different cultural expectations like each year. So one of my favorite ones they did was uh, Hungary versus um, uh, Kenya. Mm. So it was like a nice like contrast of like the cultures and the food and like uh, they would do these like great cool awesome parades like every day. So you would have these like amazing puppetry. Um, it was basically like you know I would imagine like what the live entertainment at Epcot would be was like, but like yes. for cultural expression, it was so cool. And that wraps things up for the theme park questions. Uh, Join us next time as we get to all the non-theme park questions. Mm -hmm.